Hi guys, welcome to my monthly planning video for February. This is the first proper monthly planning video I'm doing. I've done one on how I plan my months, but this is the first one where I'm like sort of taking you with me through the entire planning for February. I just want to address the background because it's a bit different to my other videos. I've been so, so busy, which is why I felt like I needed to do this planning video and I really wanted to do a big reset. January has been a bit of an insane month for me and it's later than I'd normally film my videos and it's pitch black outside thanks to British winter. So I've just tried to make a bit of a cozy atmosphere behind me and yeah, this is just gonna be a super chill video. So I hope you guys can appreciate the vibes. If you're planning with me, get out your bullet journals, your digital planner, whatever. And if you're just a listening along or getting some inspiration, get a nice cup of tea and let's get into it. Firstly, for my reset for January, as I said, I was super busy and I really felt like I just need to reset and readjust for the new month. And these aren't things I do every month, they're just things I decided to do this month, but they're good things to take inspiration from and things I like to do sort of in the week coming up to the end of the month. I guess. So I cleaned the sheets on our bed. I try to do this I think like twice a month but it just lined up with this end of the month weekend so that was really good. It's so nice getting into bed with clean sheets especially after you've had a nice big shower. I also changed the flowers I had on my desk and in the house. I like to keep flowers as long as possible because they make me so happy but when they go bad I always find it really hard to throw them out because often they're a gift from Jake and I really hate throwing out gifts but I have to realise they're perishable items. A way I've got around this with myself is I like to dry some of the flowers so I feel like I'm keeping part of it and I really really like that. I've also been doing just general laundry, you know getting to the bottom of my clothes pile. Then I don't do this every month but I think my desktop or my laptop is in need of a big clean so I'm gonna go through and put everything on there into folders. As for a sort of self reset and I just felt like I needed it this month. You don't have to do this every month and I don't do this every month. I'm sort of just trying to be more in tune with what I needed this month with all the busyness. So today I went to the gym. It was really good. I've been doing 12, 3.30. I also had a big shower and I don't know if you guys have this but there's a regular shower like one you take every day and then there's a big shower where you like wash your hair and you moisturize and you use all the different products and I feel so good after doing that and yeah I've just washed my hair and blowed it out and everything. I think just doing that all together makes you feel really really put together. Then another thing you can do when planning your month and resetting from the past month is updating your systems. So I didn't quite know how to say this because not everyone has a bullet journal but the main systems I use are my bullet journal, my notion and my google calendar. At the end of the month I will update my reading statistics in my reading bullet journal. I won't show you guys me doing this because I'm just gonna wait till it hits the first of Feb to fill that out. Then for my google calendar I like to make sure all my upcoming dates are in there then have a look at any upcoming big events I have. Then in my bullet journal I obviously do my monthly setups. This video won't involve a monthly setup but I have tons of those on my channel and frankly I'm trying to get stuff together and I have not done my February setup yet. I then go to my future log in my bullet journal and I make sure all the dates for my future log are in my monthlies and then what I do is I make sure all the dates in my bullet journal are in my google calendar and then vice versa all my google cal dates are in my bullet journal. I'm just jumping in to say I totally forgot something that I do in my monthly planning. I've spoken about this in a couple of my other videos but basically Basically, every month I like to write out my monthly accomplishments in my bullet journal. I have a page for this in my yearly setup and every month I just write the things I accomplish or fun things or important things that I did that I want to remember. I've spoken about this in a couple videos but I basically think it's really good to recognise the things that you are doing, recognise how much you do in a month. Then if there's any dates or deadlines I have to put into Notion, I put those in there and then I also plan my videos on Notion and something I do do on Notion which I'm about to get more into is I have my goals planning page. I really like this being on Notion because I can be a lot more flexible with moving around goals or getting rid of goals that I've either completed or that no longer are relevant to me. So before I can plan my goals I like to do a review of my last month's goals. So I'm just getting out my journal for this part because I've just done all the reflection and prompts in here. 
So for January, the goals I completed, I did my sock sock development form, which is a bit niche, but it's a form I had to do for my society. I finished all my January assignments. This was a goal I knew I was going to do because frankly, I had to hand them all in in January, but at the time it felt a bit impossible. So it feels really good saying that I completed all of my January assignments. I was doing three different modules and then my dissertation on top of that and had four different essay and review assignments. In total, I think it was about 12,000 words and it was a very, very intense period of time, but I did it and I'm really, really proud of myself. I also set the goal of no TikTok in bed because one of my yearly goals is to stop endless scrolling. Crazily, this worked really well. I think this goal is a perfect example of a really good habit or goal because I had the wider issue of wasting time on TikTok and on my phone. And I just thought it was one little change I can make that might help this and it has helped so much. So the rule for myself is I can watch TikTok anywhere but my bed. In the morning, if I want to wake up and sit next to my bed or sit at my desk or sit in the living room and watch TikTok, I totally can. I just can't do it in my bed. But by the time I've got up, I frankly don't want to watch TikTok anymore. And I can even go on Instagram or Snapchat, but those apps aren't as addicting. So my screen time has gone down massively. The endless scrolling has gone down massively and I'm not on TikTok so much. I've also gone on at least one walk a week. After I got COVID in December, I realized how easy it is to lose the ability to move or to breathe or everything like that and I found it so important about getting out there being in nature and also improving my sort of lung capacity because that got really damaged when I had COVID and also I'm not the fittest person in general so I thought walks was a good way to start that but on top of that because I was getting out more and being more active I'd be much more motivated to do more of it and now I've also got a gym membership and I'd be going to the gym later in January after my assignments were due and I'm absolutely loving it so I'm going to continue doing that. So the next thing you want to look at is goals you didn't complete but you still want to work. So one of my goals was to get up by 10 a.m. and I've done a lot better on this. I would say I've like 75% completed this goal but I still want to do this more consistently. Another goal was to read four books in January. I technically did read four but one of them I had started in December so I read 3.5 but I'm not being too hard on myself because it was an insanely busy month. And a goal that I really want to work on is that this one book that I have not finished and it's a non-fiction and I've been reading it since May 2021 and I am determined to finish it. Another thing I would suggest you guys do is look through your goals and see which ones you didn't complete but aren't relevant to you anymore. So it's not that you missed achieving the goal, it's that you thought more about it, that it's no longer relevant to you and that it no longer serves your purpose perhaps. I didn't have any of these this month but I usually do but that's a really good way to split up goals you didn't complete into ones that are and aren't relevant anymore. The next thing you should look at is what worked for you this month. So for example, I think the getting out into nature, walking and buying a gym membership has been working really well for me. I was also feeling really, really stuck and uninspired with cooking at the end of 2021. So I've been trying more fun recipes and looking on Pinterest more and it's really reinvigorated my love for cooking. Also, although I'm not consistently waking up before 10 a.m., the work to wake up earlier has been working really well for me. The next thing you should look at is what hasn't been working for you. I personally in general just feel like I'm already falling behind and I don't want to be too negative. I think what hasn't been working, I'm falling behind on planning, I'm falling behind on uni work and these things go hand in hand because if I'm not planning well enough, I'm falling behind on work and if I'm getting overwhelmed by work, I'm falling behind on other sorts of planning like organisation and videos and stuff like that. So with all this in mind, I went back to my yearly goals and then I sort of took in the information I gained from this review and made my February goals. I'm not sure if this is the complete list but so far I have paint my paint by numbers which is a bit niche it's a gift that Jay got for me I want to conduct my dissertation interviews more like I need to but I will I'm going to read four books I'm going to go to Fruity which is a student club night in Leeds now I'm not the biggest clubbing person but this is meant to be really chill and really cheesy and it's a thing we're doing as a society and also it's kind of like a Leeds rite of passage and I'm really excited to do it before I graduate this year I put this out there as one of my yearly goals, something I wanted to do and then we happened to be doing it as a society event that I didn't plan so I feel like putting things out there, you know, everything works out and I just feel so good. I want to start the Throne of Glass series. I bought the box set at the beginning of January and I've been reading some books for a book vlog and when I'm done with those books I'm so so excited to get into Throne of Glass. So my key for waking up early this month is to wake up consistently before 
a.m. I also want to work on filling out my mood and habit tracker in my bullet journal every morning, maybe with my cup of coffee. This is to work on falling behind in my organization. I feel like doing this every morning will get me into a routine of staying organized and staying ahead on my planning. And then my last goal is to actually finish that non-fiction book. An interesting thing to look at when you're goal setting, and I think it just makes your goals more meaningful, is to find your why. So why are you setting these goals? Why are you working towards these big achievements? or even just little things you want to do and why do you enjoy these habits why do you enjoy doing these things in fact why are you even doing this habit why do you want to wake up earlier or why do you want to go to the gym or for example if one of those habits is adding to your routine or one of the goals is to build a better routine why is that part of your routine so i've heard a lot of people talking about this it's in one of lydia violetta's recent videos and i also heard alicia marie talking about it on the pretty basic podcast and it really resonated with me so i went through my goals and wrote why i was doing them. But I also think this is a really good thing for habit tracking, for morning routines and for yearly goal planning. So for example, like I said, filling out my mood and habit tracker in the morning, for me my why is to feel more on top of things and to create more of a routine and for why I'm waking up early. This makes me less stressed because I feel like I have more time in the day. I also love seeing the morning sun and it just means I can take it slower and not have to rush things because like I said I feel like I have more time. Anyway, I went through and did that for all my goals. Some of them were just little things like obvious things like why do I want to read through in a glass because I love reading it makes me feel more creative when I'm reading books and also it's a personal hobby but some of them can get a bit deeper and I think it's really important to look at why you're adding things to your routine or to your life because it makes it more meaningful and it means you're not just doing things because you think that's what someone who is productive would do for example and then the last thing you can do in your monthly planning is make sure your habits align with your goals so I have a track in my bullet journal I have a full video all on habit tracking that is really useful if you guys want to check it out. I went through and I saw which habits aligned with my goals and if I needed to add any more habits to reach my goals. So I have my regular habits like watering my plants, washing my hair, etc. But some of my habits do relate to some of my monthly goals and also my yearly goals. So for example, drinking two liters a day is to do with being healthier and general wellness goals. Or I have this app where I film one second a day. That's to do with recording and making memories. I also have a habit of no spend days and that is to save money and now particularly for my monthly goals I have a habit that says get out of bed by 10 a.m this is obviously to do with my wake up earlier goal and just helps me track and be more consistent with it I am also going to have a going to the gym slash going for a walk goal this is again to do with my wellness and sort of gym routine goals in general okay that is everything from there so I really hope you guys enjoyed this monthly planning video I hope it made sense I hope it was all organized well enough and I really hope you guys got some inspiration let me know one of your goals for this month down in the comments I'm always looking for goals inspiration and I'm also just really interested in what you guys are looking forward to and what you guys are doing if you did like it please do like and please do subscribe I can't wait to see you guys next time and hopefully there'll be some more monthly planning videos to come thank you again for watching